Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. Okay, okay, all right. You know what? The more I think about Alien Covenant, the more upset I get about it. So I'm just gonna plow through as quick as I can and get on with it. Look, I remember when the Alien movies were genre movies, and awesome ones at that. The first two, heck, even the subsequent three or four, all of the ones whose titles began with the word alien, provided scares, thrills, and loads of slimy, gory fun, with only the slightest bit of connecting tissue between them. And that was fine. They were just with varying levels of quality, good, pulse-pounding, fun, scary films. Then someone somewhere decided that these monsters were worthy of an origin story. That this series would best be served if it had the gravitas of an underlying mythology. So a few years back, we got Prometheus, a gorgeous looking movie, high on ideas, and pretty low on explanation or purpose, and also pretty low on the actual aliens themselves. Now, I recently rewatched Prometheus to prepare myself for seeing this new film, again directed by the great Ridley Scott, and I found it again to be unfocused and shallow, stuffed with some interesting ideas, but ultimately overpowered by a whole lot of stupid character decisions and wrapped up in a load of questions that it was difficult to ultimately give a crap about. Oh, and again, virtually no aliens. So here we have Alien Covenant, which is a half-sequel, half-response to the criticism of Prometheus, which promises to, yes, finally have the aliens in it. Heck, it's right there in the title. It also attempts to supply us with an explanation of the aliens' origin, which nobody ever really needed or asked for. It's puzzling, to say the least. It kind of reminds me of those much maligned Star Wars prequels, the way that it takes great pains to provide links from Prometheus to the story of Alien, despite the fact that in order to do so, entire characters and plot threads must be dispatched without fanfare, major turning points glossed over in simple flashbacks, character motivations are changed, and the rules that we know about the alien biology and this weird sort of black goo which was introduced in Prometheus get completely reinvented in a way that I'm sorry, but the more that I think about it, the more I'm not quite sure it all completely scans. Not to mention that plot twists are telegraphed in eye-rollingly obvious ways. Allegedly smart characters once again do incredibly dumb things that put themselves and everyone else in danger. And near the end, some pretty jerky storytelling makes its wannabe gotcha ending sequence feel like, uh something that was added later in reshoots. And it takes place after a big, huge action sequence that sure felt like the story's climax to me. And all of that occurs before a final revelation that even though I saw it coming a mile away, seriously, a mile away, I just, I just rejected it. I rejected it the way a body rejects a hastily installed organ. It just raises too many contradictory questions, sweeps too much under the rug. And again, it wants to instill so much gravitas and depth so much darn poetry and philosophy into a series that's really just about fighting icky monsters. That the entire film becomes muddy and bloated, gnashing teeth, spraying acid, bloody carnage in tight spaces. This is the wheelhouse of the Alien series, or any movie about deadly monsters for that matter. And every time Alien Covenant ventures away from that, the results are far less exciting. Now, when Ridley Scott does stick to the basics though, the results are just as effective as ever. This movie again is beautifully shot and designed, and there are a handful of scenes here that ratchet up the tension to unbearable levels, despite the fact that characters run headlong into danger by removing their safety helmets, breaking into smaller groups, and ignoring safety measures like quarantines and airlocks. This is the boneheaded stupidity you'd expect from dispensable horror movie characters, no doubt, but it doesn't quite gel with all that highfalutin intellectualism that seems crammed in to bridge the gap to Prometheus. Add to that some top-notch creature and makeup effects, and a handful of solid performances, especially that of Michael Fassbender, who takes on a pretty sizable amount of heavy lifting here, and I had plenty to admire throughout the film's running time. Moments of brilliance or awe frequently rise to the top and rear their ugly heads before being lost once more in a swirling sea of confused priorities. Ultimately, I think Alien Covenant would have been a much better movie if it had simply picked a side. On one hand, it's a splattery monster movie which requires you to check your brain at the door, and on the other hand, it's a philosophical mystery that requires you to run outside to retrieve your brain just so you can check and make sure that what that character did actually makes sense. There's certainly enough for the most die-hard horror fans to chew on, but in the end, there is too much ancillary garbage in Alien Covenant for me to award it anything higher than a small bag of popcorn. In its quest to provide answers to questions that we never asked in the first place, Alien Covenant throws a bunch of ideas, plot twists, and half-baked explanations at us that simply don't make enough sense 
to get you to care. That does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter, at Movies That Pop. And click the icon right down there to visit our channel if you'd like to see more. And support us by clicking subscribe while you're there. And by clicking the thumbs up icon below. I'd like to hear your thoughts on Alien Covenant in the comments as well. Let me know. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel. And get away from her, you bitch!